this video is probably going to shock and horrify you, and it should, because along the border in Texas right now, it's even worse than you think. In fact, it's a lot worse. Just how bad is it getting? Wait until you see this. You're going to see things here you haven't seen anywhere else, so make sure you hit the share button and comment and react along the way. I aim to tell you four things in this video. First and foremost, how did 20,000 mostly Haitian migrants end up in this situation? In like a shanty town on the border in Texas with no porta potties or not enough at least and babies with no diapers all over the place? Question number two, where in the hell are these people going? The nearest town is 35,000 people, the population. This is 20,000 people just right here, right now. Which brings us to the third question. Are there more people coming? Is this about to get even worse than it is right now? And finally, number four, how can we fix all this? What can we do about it? So let's dive in, and you're going to see some things that are absolutely unbelievable. This is the reality of the situation. This is a bridge near the Rio Grande where these Haitian migrants, or mostly Haitian migrants, 20,000 strong, have set up shop. And if I zoom into this spectacular photo, you can see just how many people there are. And although many of them are headed into the United States of America, some are being flown back to Haiti and some are headed south, none of them are being tested as the head of the United States for COVID-19. These uh, little areas that they've built have been built up over the last several weeks, almost like stalls in a marketplace with thatch ceilings and all sorts of stuff that they built up. It is an absolute monstrosity of human beings suffering right now along the southern border. Some of these photos are going to blow your mind. On the New York Post website, images of a migrant camp under Texas Bridge show misery and squalor. And you can see these people, a lot of kids, in just absolutely uh, unbelievably shocking situations. Now they have a, uh, because we don't have an actual wall here, they have a wall of vehicles that they've used to block some of these folks out. So we've literally made a wall of vehicles to block off this particular area. And uh, look at some of these folks showering out there with milk jugs full of water from the Rio Grande. Some of them tossing away passports because they don't want to be tied to other countries. This is what it looks like at night. I mean, it's just an absolute catastrophe. And it's a true mess. This is a giant scandal that's certainly not getting enough coverage. What happens to all of these people? Can a wall of cars hold them in? Well, they're not just coming past the cars and over the rivers. They've found other ways to get into the United States of America like this. Rio Grande Valley Sector Border Patrol says people were using a storm drain to illegally enter the United States and then staying in a hotel being used for human smuggling. Agents say they found 16 people in a hotel room. All of them were from the Honduras, El Salvador, and Mexico. They said they were waiting to be transported further into the United States. Agents then set up at the storm drain where they found multiple people crossing into the U.S., including one unaccompanied child. So they got kids, they got families, they got people crawling through the storm drains to enter Texas and get into the United States of America. And they are being released into the U.S. in droves with a big fat promise to come back real soon, we swear. Many Haitian migrants camped in a small Texas border town, according to uh, the Associated Press, are being released into the United States, two U.S. officials said Tuesday, undercutting the Biden administration's public statements that the thousands in the camp faced immediate expulsion. Haitians have been freed on a very, very large scale in recent days, according to one U.S. official who put the figure in the thousands, at least, that are headed into the country. Many have been released with notices to appear in an immigration office within 60 days, an outcome that requires less processing time for Border Patrol agents than ordering an appearance in immigration court and points to the speed at which authorities are currently moving. How are they getting here? Where are they coming from? Is is somebody in Haiti just flying these folks over? Well, here's how it works. This is, uh, according to Spectrum News, nearly all Haitians reach the U.S. border on a well-known route. They fly to Brazil, or Brazil, uh, Chile, or elsewhere in South America. If the jobs dry up, they slowly move through Central America and Mexico by bus and on foot to wait, sometimes years, in northern border cities like Tijuana for the right time to enter the U.S. This is what they think is the right time. These folks have received what they believe to be the right signals from the Biden administration that this is the right time for all of them to move out of their various places and gather together as one large group of more than 20,000 and growing Haitians who make their way to the border and enter the United States through various measures, 
means and ways. And some of these people are being pushed back south. But in Mexico, even though they're pretending that they are welcoming these folks in, they make it as difficult for them as possible. They have a difficult time getting work permits, finding jobs, and even finding a place to live. So they push them right on through to the United States of America. Now, I think this is serious and something that deserves some coverage, but apparently Maxine Waters thinks it's on a whole other level. To be able to petition to get into the country. What the hell are we doing here? What we witnessed takes us back hundreds of years. What we witnessed was worse than what we witnessed during slavery. Sorry, it's a bit hard to hear. It's raining and the camera was far away. She literally said what we witnessed. She's talking about the horses in this now famous video where they are trying to corral these people crossing the border. What we witnessed was worse than what we witnessed in slavery. Might be a bit of an overstatement. The NAACP says these images, although centuries apart, still seem to represent the worst of America's capacity for humanity. And they have somebody who is whipping a slave here in this drawing. And then a still frame from this video where it looks like this uh, Border Patrol agent is whipping this uh, man that he's capturing. But he's really just grabbing his shirt. Those are his reins that are uh, dragging down there. Still a very bad video optics-wise for the Border Patrol. Meanwhile, when we go to the White House, how many people are coming into the country? That's an easy question, right? How many Haitians are coming into the United States of America? How many are we flying back? How many are we sending to Mexico? These are simple numbers. We should have them because there's a humanitarian crisis on the border. Thank you, Jen. Just following up on this very basic but very important question, mm -hmm. you're telling us that the DHS chief has the most recent numbers about how many of these Haitians under the bridge have been sent back and how many have been released into the U.S. The DHS chief is telling us that he doesn't know. So who else can we ask? You can certainly ask the Department of Homeland Security. I am confident, <laughs> Peter. I am confident he wanted to have the most up-to-date numbers, and we will venture to get you those, I promise you, this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, come on. Where are the numbers? This isn't something that just started. These folks have been on the border for quite some time now, and it's growing and growing and growing as a group, and we can't get straight answers from the White House as to how many of these people have been let in to the United States. The Department of Homeland Security says, we don't know. The White House says, ask the DHS, and then back and forth we go. This is a mess, man. Is this an issue of not knowing, or is this an issue of a lot more people are being released into the U.S. than are being sent out? That is certainly not the issue. First, I think it's important to reiterate what I conveyed earlier about uh, what the actual process is. Uh, individuals are expelled under Title 42. If they can't be expelled under Title 42, they are put into a removal process. If they are put into a removal process, they're either transported to an ICE facility or released with a legal document. So these folks are released with a legal document in the United States, the legal document being, hey, Mr. Migrant, can you please come back in 90 days? And if everything doesn't go perfectly for you, we'll send you home. It shouldn't shock you to know that there's some people who don't make those appointments. Then they went to the airport. Check this out. The Haitians that they were deporting by plane were so pissed off, they were attacking the pilots that flew them to Port au Prince, Haiti. And they injured three ISA officers along the way. I've got video of this in just a moment here. Haitians deported from the U.S. on Tuesday assaulted the pilots on board one of the flights when it arrived in Port au Prince and injured three U.S. immigration officers, according to a source with internal reports of the incident. Unrest broke out shortly after a flight carrying single adult men arrived and released the men to Haitian authorities on the airport tarmac. Lots of stories about just how angry they were. This from the BBC. They said when they got off, they started throwing their shoes at the jet. They said that uh, one of the flights uh, had an assault on it, at least one of the flights, and these folks uh, got really upset. There was one group of people. It says at the time, these migrants were being transported on a bus from the town of Brownsville to Del Rio. When the migrants found out they were going to be sent back to Haiti, they took over the bus and they fled. And they just hauled ass out of there. This whole thing is a mess. This is a scandal. This is what it looks like at the airport in Port-au-Prince when these folks are being sent back to Haiti. Throwing shoes at the plane. More shoes being thrown.
no organization. They have absolutely no organization apparently going on here. And now they uh, they dumped all of their personal belongings onto the airstrip. So they just said, here's everybody's stuff. And they had to pick out on all these bags. Everybody had to find their own things, pissing them off even more as they kicked their asses on their way home, these particular people. Maybe this is why they've decided to let more and more just into the country, I guess. Uh, and some of these people are saying they lost their passports in the process. It is an absolute and utter cluster F. There's no doubt about that. What happens next? Are there more on the way? Why, yes, there are. More than 20,000 Haitians are gathered in Colombia for possible migration to the U.S. This is from NBC News. Just a handful of days ago, U.S. officials are tracking large groups of Haitians in Latin America, including more than 20,000 in Colombia, who, like the thousands now massed at the Texas border, may soon try to reach the U.S. So in addition to the 20,000 Haitians that are in northern Colombia, there's two other groups at least, 1,500 in Panama and 3,000 in Peru. That would be 44,500 Haitian migrants that will be at this bridge if something isn't done soon. How do you get those people out of this place? We saw how well the evacuation from Bagram Air Force Base and how the evacuation from Afghanistan in general went. Is this going to be more orderly? We are talking about a lot of people here. There is huge surges in numbers, and yes, there are indeed more on the way. This, I believe, is some footage of one of the groups, another group of 20,000 Haitian migrants that is currently in Colombia. They are on their way. They will be making their move next to head up into Mexico and head up into the United States of America. Here they've got their tents. Unbelievable. This is going to get much worse before it gets better. Mark my words on that. Lots of trash. So on and on they go. Again, what happened here was they thought they saw all the right signals. They thought that the time was right for them to make their way into the United States of America. And all these countries that saw them coming through knew they weren't going to stay there. Every country in Central America is like, keep on moving. We know you're not stopping here. They get to Mexico. Mexico's like, keep on moving. We know you're not going to stop here. And Mexico knows as a power move, it destabilizes the United States, number one, and also gives them some sort of ammunition for negotiation to say, all right, we'll, we'll uh, cut off the flow of these migrants headed to the United States of America. Here is Texas Governor Abbott talking about what's going to happen next. Texas is taking unprecedented steps. Governor Greg Abbott traveled to Del Rio Tuesday. He announced steps to address the Haitian migrant crisis at the border. We are arresting and jailing anybody who comes across the border illegally and trespasses on private property or on pu public land. Abbott says there were about 8,600 migrants underneath the International Bridge Tuesday morning. Now, this is just at one point in time, they're saying, that snapshot much smaller than what we're seeing right now, and more and more people are rolling through. So again, you had about 20,000 people under the bridge, as you see in this photo. You've got another group of 20,000 Haitian migrants in Colombia on their way, and you've got some smaller groups of a couple thousand that may build. Because like everything else, they get on WhatsApp, they get on other uh, different applications, and they send the word to other people, we're doing it now. If we all go together then we have better luck getting in. They do this when people are moving from Honduras. They do this when people are moving from Guatemala to try to cross the border in the United States. They use the numbers. And so they've been sitting there waiting in a hibernation-like status for this moment. And that's why we have such a major problem at the border. So what happens next? Let me know what you think about this. And if you think it's going to get better before, or worse before it gets better, or what you think the outcome of this is going to be. Do you think the Biden administration, especially if you're a Democrat, is doing a good job here? And how do you think the media coverage of all this has been so far? Hit the share button if you enjoyed this video and you want to show other folks exactly what's happening on the border with these Haitian migrants and the issue that we're facing right here.
Uh, and I appreciate, as always, you watching this video. If you're over on Facebook at facebook.com slash the news junkie, hit that follow button so you get videos just like this every single day. Over on youtube.com slash the news junkie, hit subscribe, please. And thanks to my supporters who are paying a little extra on both platforms to keep these videos coming. That is very helpful, and I appreciate you. Magnets just for you supporters on the way very, very soon. So I look forward to your comments. I appreciate you watching this video, and we'll talk to you again real soon.